steroids and bodybuilding. Steroids are taken uh, eight or nine, ten weeks before a competition. I take them. I took them. Yeah, up until the competition. Aside from Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was always rather vocal about his steroid use during his bodybuilding career, all kinds of stories circulate of the kinds of cycles that bodybuilders took around the golden years of bodybuilding. In today's video, we continue with a series of interviews with Ken Sprague, and Ken talks about the steroid scene at Gold's Gym and explains the different types of steroid cycles that bodybuilders took during the golden years of bodybuilding. Enjoy! Moving on now to the steroid scene at Gold's Gym. How was it that uh, Gold's Gym bodybuilders obtained their steroids? Was it through doctors? Uh, and if so, which doctors were the ones administering or supplying steroids? Well, it, uh, a lot of people went to uh, doctors. Uh, I can think of... Um, uh, Dr. Walzak, for example, had his bunch of uh, bodybuilders coming over. Dr. Jaycott, who I might add was my children's pediatrician and a great doctor. Mm -hmm. Great doctor. He really was. He was a pediatrician primarily. Two separate waiting rooms, one for the bodybuilders and one for the yeah, kids. Yeah, I heard that you had big <laughs> bodybuilders sitting right next to kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got two waiting rooms after that. But uh, really, he was a jewel. Dr. Jaycott, and of course, he's either first or second doctor prosecuted for dispensing steroids mm -hmm. because the law had changed. And this was much later than I knew him in 1990, I think, where yeah. it was illegal to uh, prescribe steroids for non-medical reasons. And uh, so he went to jail over that, which oh, I, I'm so sad. I really am really, really sad about that. Mm. Um, was but, also was there also Dr. Robert Kerr? Was he? Yes, there was Robert Kerr. He was more out in the open. Hmm. Uh, I don't. The only practice I really know how it was conducted was Dr. Jacobs, okay. and he was ethical. He made sure everybody took blood tests, etc. And because he was, I don't. People would go to him, and David, David Hasselhoff. I don't know whether you know that yeah. name. He was on Baywatch. Hasselhoff was in problems with the um, with the authorities, and so he squealed on on Jaycott. I've read about it. Yeah, yeah, and that that is what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what led to his prosecution. Yes, yes, okay. that led to the prosecution. And darn it, it blew something. <laughs> My brother, uh, the the brother that got me involved in um, in uh, bodybuilding and weight training all the way back when I was 10. Well, he was with me in California in the early 80s. Don and I had come back from living on an island in the early 80s. And uh, I introduced him to Jaycott. He wanted to do a research project based on Jaycott's medical records. Uh, but we never got around to that. But Jaycott... Uh, Jaycott was honest in his dispensing. Now, those that didn't go to the doctors might drive to Tijuana. Yeah. One, one of the guys might offer, hey, I'm going to Tijuana. How about picking up the gas and I'll get your steroids too? Yeah. Mm. Because they were uh, not, uh, no need of prescription in uh, Tijuana, which was 110 miles from Gold's. So thanks for... Um... Yeah explaining about uh, which doctors were the ones involved in the um, steroid scene. Um, uh, what, would you then know what the typical steroid protocols were at Gold's Gym, or was that information kind of not privy to you? Uh, well, now, the protocols differed depending on whether or not you were taking medical advice or not. <laughs> Uh, on average, on average, the fellows were limited to, at that time, Diana Ball, which you've heard of, and uh, testosterone or, um, oh gosh, decadoroblin, decadoroblin and um, testosterone and Diana Ball. Now they're, they're 
some people had a prima volan. I think that's yeah. a pronunciation. Yeah. Sent in from Germany. <laughs> we won't yeah. mention who my. <laughs> well, we know who that is. <laughs> yeah, who, who that might have gotten to. But uh, the average dosage was somewhere around one shot of, now this is for contest mm -hmm. preparation, three tablets of Dianabol and one, one shot of testosterone. For most people, that was it. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people that took as many as 100 Dianabol tablets a day rather than the three. Oh, my God. I know. I know. It, it's, it's nuts. It is nuts. But some bodybuilders are driven by nuts. <laughs> That's another whole another area. But anyway, uh, so it was all over the field you know, what the dosages were. There was no set regimen. Try mm -hmm. to learn from one another, you know, what was best. But still in all, it averaged around three, uh, three pills a day, three Dianabol tablets and one injectable a week testosterone. And there were, pay, uh, to reiterate, there were people that were taking 100 tablets, which was totally useless because once you're re your muscle receptors or testosterone receptors are saturated. You That's can't it. use it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to get rid of it through the, through the liver. And that's the problem. Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. You know, but I've got to tell you, can't, and again, I know you want me to be candid. I didn't see anyone that had anything like a roid rage from it. Uh, that sort of, I think that just became sort of the media sensation okay. guys does something bad he's taking steroids they must be connected well they must not be and lyle alzado who was a good friend was a good friend so i knew lyle well enough but even he said that his brain tumor was because of steroids hmm. but it didn't give other people brain tumors <laughs> i mean we find a way to excuse ourselves Mm. not being you know, immortal yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean um i wasn't going to ask necessarily about medical issues because i know there are associations and speaking yeah. really, speaking from a me medical point of view uh, at least it is known that anabolics the uh, the effects the longer term effects can be um increased red blood cell production therefore thickening of the blood and uh, yeah, that, that's probable yeah. yeah because i know that uh, bodybuilders back then had the practice of of uh giving blood away to actually drop their blood pressure yeah um, yeah that's still a medical uh reason uh, to remove blood yeah and I think. I think the anabolics themselves i mean were probably not i mean from what i can see the issues you could have kidney issues but more with diuretics um yeah, the steroids themselves right. if there is a tumor already growing inside you it makes sense that an anabolic being a steroid is going to speed it up yeah it you speeds say, it up so I, I don't know i don't know if that's the case um, I, I think that uh, that would be the case but again i'm not advocating their use but to me i'm just speaking logic like just thinking logically yeah that that's what would happen, right? If there's any issues, they, they might be exacerbated, but the issue needs to be there first. That's the thing I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think uh, steroids are a precipitating uh, reason to have a medical problem. But right. I think as you've used the word exacerbate, I agree with that, probably yeah. so. Yeah, it definitely exacerbates existing problems, but... Um, yeah, so if you're going to grow muscles with them, why not grow tumors with exactly them? <laughs> exactly yeah but i don't know i don't want to imply that i know that <laughs> yeah um so thanks again for now uh, elaborating on the types of protocols you did mention that this was for competition and of course you had a whole variety of different protocols based on people's own ethics etc decisions um uh -huh. for those that at least that played it safe and and went to doctors how many times a year then would they be on these cycles? Would it be the whole year or just twice a year or just before competition? 
you know, th th that's the issue. It depended again on the individual. Some would uh, go the whole year. Some would go cycled, as you say, uh, usually eight weeks. Uh, that was about uh, the time it took for contest preparation. So right. the cycle became what would have been the length of contest preparation without steroids. You know, it all sort of was a nebulous uh, uh, putting together of factors at that time. Mm -hmm. Once they had the dynamic, well, contest is eight weeks away. I'd better get ready. Steroids. Yeah. Okay. But most people didn't use them year round. Yeah. And a couple of contests a year, you know, a couple of eight week periods. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, as we have heard from Ken Sprague, the steroid scene was definitely a contributing factor to the ever growing physiques that would grace the now TV screens, bringing curiosity to the newly discovered sport of bodybuilding in the early 1970s. Of course, to this day, it is no surprise, however, Ken was able to explain the finer details behind the compounds and protocols used by bodybuilders back in the golden years. Doctors Yacott, Walzak and Kerr were the major doctors who would supply steroids to bodybuilders, as well as athletes and even movie stars like David Hasselhoff, who eventually spilled the beans on Dr. Yacott, who ended up being prosecuted as the first doctor who was sentenced for distributing steroids. Bodybuilders not wanting to go through doctors to obtain their steroids would drive down to Tijuana to obtain their steroids without prescription and so began the practice of illegally smuggling steroids into the US as well as their distribution and administration without medical supervision. The compounds available at the time according to Ken Sprague was mainly the well-known steroids such as Dianabol, Testosterone, Decadurabolin and Primabolin. On average, those on doctor's supervision would be taking three Dianabol a day and one shot of testosterone a week, about three months prior to competition, usually doing two cycles a year. And Kedden would know, because he himself took steroids whilst training at Gold's Gym. But for those that did not follow the set regimen, these bodybuilders at Gold's would go all out, taking up to 100 Dianabol tablets a day, which is pretty insane whilst others would be on steroids the whole year. So it is obvious that different bodybuilders at Gold's experimented with rather large dosages and extended their cycles too, and that they would also learn of the effects of these steroids by observing each other's experiences. So I do hope you have enjoyed this interview with Ken Sprague on the steroid scene at Gold's Gym. If you have, please give the video a like, subscribe and leave me a comment. In the next video interview, Ken and I talk about the explosion of Gold's Gym and the filming of Pumping Iron. So please stay tuned. That's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the Golden Era stars merchandise, and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eder, John Grimmick, Reg Park, and many other Golden Era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the Golden Era stars are also available, and to collaborate, please get in touch. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Not all of us have the time to go to a gym or the opportunity to have a coach to teach us one-on-one -on -one. But with the Future Fitness app, it's like having a personal trainer in your living room. From February 11th onwards, you can try the Future Fitness app for only $19 for the first month. Think of what you can accomplish during that first month. So go on and hit my link at tryfuture.co slash geb to get started.
Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.coldenerabookum.com.